Once upon a time, in early 14th century Ireland, there was a powerful clan called the Amali. A great seafaring family, they swiftly rose to their power. They ruled the southern shore of Clue Bay, and the majority of the barony of Murrisk, for over 300 years. They were ruthless pirates and terrorized the ships which sailed to and fro from Galway town, taxing all those who fished off their coasts. The clan traded with some coastal areas of France and Spain and built a row of castles facing the sea to protect their territory along the rugged coast of Western Ireland. The most famous of the Amali clan, was Grace. She was born around 1530 at Belcare Castle near Westport. She was the only daughter of her mother Margaret and her father, Owen Dove Dara, better known as the Black Oak Amali. According to legend, Grace as a young girl, wanted to join her dad on the sea and travel with him to Spain. Her mother disagreed saying she was a girl and not a sailor. Grace shaved off all her hair to disguise herself as a boy. Her father gave in, and so Grace went on board the ship, and from then on she became commonly known by her Irish nickname Grawn the Whale, a name reputed to come from the Irish for bald. As a child she lived in her family's castles of Belclare Castle, and their main stronghold O'Malley Castle, situated on Clare Island. She was educated and it is said she spoke Latin. She was born to be galley captain, sea trader, sea raider, virago, diplomat and a great leader. She had a force of character that comes only once in a century. When her father died she inherited his large shipping and trading business and became queen and chieftain of the O'Malley clan. In 1546 Grace, who was 15 years old, married Donal O'Flaherty, son of the chieftain of the O'Flaherty clan, in an area of Western Ireland called Con Amara, and in turn he became ally of the O'Malley clan. The marriage had created a powerful union of forces. They lived at Bunowen Castle on the coast near Ballycanely, in County Galway. In his company she learned and polished the art of boarding ships. She bore him three children, a daughter named Margaret, and two sons, Owen and Murrow. When her husband was killed fighting ashore, Grace, aged 23, took over his castle and his fleet of fighting ships. Then she returned to Mayo with a bolstered up army of followers. Later in 1566 she married again for political reasons, this time to Richard de Burke, or also known as the Lower MacWilliam family. According to tradition the couple married under early Irish Brehan law. With this marriage Grace gained control of Rockfleet Castle near Newport. She divorced him after one year. Calling out a window to him, she shouted, Richard Burke. I dismiss you under Brehan law which was often at odds with Irish canon law. And totally against any English systems, the Irish law allowed men to take more than one wife at a time, but, it also allowed for women to divorce, actions that canon law expressly forbid. So, in English documents they remained married. She was able to manage to keep his castle and remained ally of Richard. Many stories grew up around this pirate queen. They had one son she Boyd now long, Toby of the ships, born around 1567. She gave birth to her son Toby, at sea, and within an hour, when her galley was boarded by Algerian pirates, she, wrapped in a blanket, appeared on deck leading her ships into battle, her crew rallied again, and swiftly captured the pirate vessel. She had control on several castles including Rockfleet in Clue Bay, Duna on Black Sod, Kildavnet on Oakle Island and her main stronghold O'Malley Castle. It was there at O'Malley Castle where Grace lived in summer. It was a place she loved so much, but above all it was strategically placed at the center of her sea kingdom. It is said she would tie the mooring ropes of her galley to her bed through her bedroom window, ready to get on board quickly. From Knockmore she could send or receive messages and repeat them on other towers on Inish Turk and the other islands, using smoke columns or flags of different colors. In 1580, after 15 years of battles and negotiations, Grace's husband, Richard was granted a knighthood by the English governor of Connacht, Sir Nicholas Mulby. He was also given the highest title in Connacht, 
the McWilliam title. When the two men died, the new governor, Sir Richard Bingham, and his men reignited the conflict and persecuted Grace and her followers again. In the late 16th century, English power steadily grew in Ireland and the Amali clan's power was steadily encroached upon. In 1593, when her two sons Toby and Murrow, and her half-brother Donald were captured by Lord Bingham, Grace sailed to England to petition Queen Elizabeth I for their release. Elizabeth famously sent Grace a list of questions, which were answered and returned to Elizabeth. Grace then met with the Queen at the palace in Greenwich, wearing a fine gown. The two of them were surrounded by guards and the members of Elizabeth's royal court. Grace refused to bow before Elizabeth because she didn't recognize her as the Queen of Ireland. It's also rumored that she had a dagger concealed about her person, which guards found upon searching her. Elizabeth's courtiers were said to be very upset and worried, but Grace informed the Queen that she carried it for her own safety. Elizabeth accepted this and seemed untroubled. Some also reported that Grace had sneezed and was given a lace-edged handkerchief from a noblewoman. She apparently blew her nose into it and then threw the cloth into a nearby fireplace, much to the shock of the court. Grace informed everyone that in Ireland, a used handkerchief was considered dirty and was properly destroyed. Their discussion was carried out in Latin, as Grace spoke no English and Queen Elizabeth no Irish. After much talk, the women came to an agreement which included that Elizabeth would remove Bingham from his position in Ireland, and Grace would stop supporting the Irish Lord's rebellions. Elizabeth also released her sons, and her brother. Grace then put an end to piracy against England. Lord Bingham was removed but several of Grace's other demands, including the return of the cattle and land that he had stolen from her, remained unmet, and soon Elizabeth sent Bingham back into Ireland. He continued to plague Grace and her clan and in 1594 troops were quartered on her lands. As the Nine Years' War escalated, Grace sought to entrench her position with the Crown. On 18 April 1595 she petitioned Lord Burley, complaining of the activities of troops and asking to hold her estate for Elizabeth. She added that her sons, cousins, and followers would serve with a hundred men at their own charges, at sea upon the coast of Ireland, in Her Majesty's wars, upon all occasions, and to continue dutiful unto Her Majesty, as true and faithful subjects. Throughout the war she encouraged and supported her son Toby to fight for the crown against Tyrone's confederation of Irish lords. Despite a life full of adventure, Grace lived to an old age. She died in 1603, the same year as Elizabeth's death, though the year and place of Grace's death are disputed. Her family's usual burial place was in the Cistercian Abbey on Clare Island. After her death, she became an Irish folk hero of legendary status. Today the O'Malley name lives on, in the west of Ireland. In particular around the beautiful town of Westport in County Mayo where many shops, pubs and businesses bear, the famous name of the O'Malley clan.